Hello and good morning, and welcome to Good Morning Zyathe. Uh, I am not Alphinius, definitely no polymorph spell here. However, he is about a mile that way, stuck in traffic. So, hopefully he can catch up with us shortly. Um, and Camera Mandy, do you have that picture that he sent over? I am working on getting it up in just a <laughs> second here. We've had a stressful morning so, in Colorado Springs. <laughs> Yeah, so for those of you who do or don't know, we happen to have like a foot of snow it feels like outside, and it's the really thick, heavy, wet snow. So all the trees are completely folded over in half. Um, I lost at least three gardening implements up into my tree today trying to loosen the snow from the, the leaves. It was just lots of fun. Yeah, so. it's, been, it's been a bit of a morning, so Alphineas will be here. Uh, we are just currently... Um, uh, we'll, we'll start with like some social media. We'll, we'll talk through some stuff. I'm getting the chat up. So I'm sorry. I don't even know if anyone's watching right now. Um, hold on. It so yeah, we just got into the studio. Alphidius is trying to get into the studio. Um, we were just not prepared for, as I put in the title, Snowmageddon in Colorado. So, oh, here we go. Yes. Hello. Hello, everyone. Okay. I have the chat up now. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, like I said, Alphineas, if uh, you're just joining us, is coming, but he is stuck in like bumper to bumper traffic at the mo more moment. Um, oh, I have a, I have the picture right here. So just give me a second and I'll throw it up. So, oh, the person sitting in front of you, I should probably mention, uh, this is my husband, Adam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, Adam's sitting in for Alphineas for the just temporary future here. Okay, where did all my images go? My goodness. Watching her scroll through a million different images on the screen here. There and we are. Okay. Boy, so, how do you for a good show? Yeah, this is, I know, right? We're, we're just having a, so yeah, this is Alphineas. He sent a picture of the traffic that he is stuck in. It is just bumper to bumper and he is just stuck there right now. Um, currently, uh, he also just posted a picture from the den of like the winter wonderland that we are currently in right now. Uh, today is what, it's March or May 21st and we're having this gigantic snowstorm. <laughs> So. And, and not a week ago, we were experiencing, what, 80 degree days, and we were like, we should turn on the air conditioner. It's really hot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nuts. And so um, hopefully he will be, yeah, hat your man. Yeah, it's true. Grab the hat. You should definitely be wearing a hat on this stream. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're grabbing the hat because we're in studio without Alphineas. And I agree. We He should be wearing a, a hat. He's grabbing it. I don't have an aversion to hats, unlike some wizards. Uh, by the way, Adam is a cybersecurity uh, professional, so if anyone has any questions about cybersecurity um, or anything, just please put them in the chat and I'll have them answer them on the fly. So um, I do not think Alphonse will be getting another ticket, Ben, uh, but we'll, we will see. So Unless he goes and takes the emergency lane for himself to try and get here, but hopefully he doesn't do that. We have a few people, it looks like, in the chat who are also cyber wizards, as we put it. So, um, yes. Uh, hey, what would you say are your three top tips for a good cybersecurity? Uh, I mean, the first and most uh, basic or relatively most basic is make sure that you use different passwords for every different account that you have. And since we have a million different accounts today, the best way to do that is with a password manager. And there are certain risks involved with having a password manager, but I personally feel that the risks... Um, of having a single password used everywhere or even a single bad password used everywhere, um, it far outweighs the risks associated with having that password manager in use. Password managers are things like LastPass. Yeah, I didn't know if we could name drop specific Oh, yeah, companies. we could name drop specific ones. So, okay. yeah. yeah. LastPass, Dashline, 1Password. Uh, if you don't like paying for a service, there's also one key pass, which is free and open source, I believe. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Password managers are awesome. Let's do a giveaway okay. right now. Um, so we recently got in some Alfabio folios. Let's have a look, see here. Uh, here's Alphineas signing the Alfabio folios, uh, but we have five extra. So we will go ahead and do a giveaway for one of the Alfabio folios right off the bat. Um, so let's do, let me just get the giveaway set up really quickly. Um, I should have found that wig. Oh, the pink wig. I have it in the back over there. Okay, so our first... Um, oh, okay, it'll be Cyber Wizard. How about that? Cyber Wizard. So in just a second, I will open the poll. And you'll put in hashtag Cyber Wizard. 
Should be good to go. Hashtag Cyber Wizard. Um, and we will give away our first El Fabio folio. So just put in hashtag Cyber Wizard into the chat and we will draw a winner in just a few short minutes here. Right. Um, in the meantime, why don't we actually look at Oh, do you have do a second tip? tip? I was, yeah, you, want get, to, get, you, you asked for three. I know. I'm going to get dudes too. I thought we'd just pepper them throughout the okay, stream. Okay, we'll pepper. We'll pepper. Oh, okay. But yeah, go ahead. What's your second tip? Uh, the second one is uh, if you have any IoT devices in your house, this is Internet of Things devices. So things like Alexas, Chromecasts. Um, Roombas? Roombas. Yeah, smart light bulbs, smart thermostats, any of this stuff. Uh, you should probably isolate it onto its own network because those act as potential endpoints into your network. So the way you can do this very, very easily is instead of putting it on your main Wi-Fi, uh, see if you can get into your Wi-Fi, turn on a guest Wi-Fi account, and then make sure you have isolation on there. Uh, usually it's a checkbox that says something like, don't allow guests to access your local network. Um, and by doing that, you're allowing those smart devices to, to still have access to the internet, while not allowing them access to your internal network. See, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a guest network when I married Adam, but here we are. <laughs> I know so much now. Yeah, so okay. yeah, quick things. Obviously, there's a million different things you can talk about. So. All right, while we're finishing up our Cyber Wizard um, giveaway, um, I actually want to do a quick announcement. Um, I posted this in Facebook last night, uh, but our scenescapes here, uh, which are currently posted on gooeycube.com, and if you are part of our Kickstarter, you should have access to them. Um, when we had first posted them, uh, we were hosting them ourselves, and the player was limited in terms of, um, you couldn't like change the quality of the scenescapes, and they were rendered out in 4K, so that was wreaking havoc on uh, certain people's internet. So we've now um, uh, started hosting them on Vimeo. And the really cool thing about Vimeo is that there's a setting, uh, which I will post here. Um, if you see where the arrows are pointing, there's like a little gear. And you can actually uh, make the settings to you stream however you want. Yes. Transcode it to a lower resolution. Yes, and so you can play it at 4K, you can play it at HD, you can play it at a much lower quality, and this should not, uh, this should be able to, um, you should never. Bandwidth is no longer an issue. Thank you, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, sorry, I got distracted because Harry, who, who we all know, um, also works in cybersecurity, has um, another tip. He says, never answer the security questions with the real answer. For example, what city were you born in? Answer, yellow. As long as you know the answer, it doesn't have to be true. And that's actually a really interesting point that I had never thought about before. Well, I had thought about, I, I was actually just thinking about this because like a cyber question was like, what is uh, the, first name of your best man at the wedding or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's really easy to get that information from Facebook, so. Yeah, yeah. I think there was actually a famous person, I am probably gonna misquote which one it was, but I think it was uh, Paris Hilton or one of them. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Point being is uh, Paris Hilton, the thing was, what is the name of your dog? And everybody who knows anything about Paris knows the, her dog's name. I don't, but um, <laughs> that was her security question. And so somebody was able to hack into her account because the question was very easily found on the internet. This also goes for anybody who has any presence on the internet. So if you have a Facebook, LinkedIn account, if you have any sort of presence on the internet, this it, there is a ton of information about you out there and it wouldn't be horrifically difficult to figure out who the best man at your wedding is or what the name of your dog is or you know any of these other things that you think are secrets or relatively unknown about you it's going to be easy enough to find that stuff absolutely um okay so our winner for the first folio of which by the way we have five um is peter andrew payson Ooh. And also, I know some of you have already won Alfabio Folio, so if you win something else, if you win, you can still enter all the giveaways that we're going to do today. Um, we will just send you a different arted folio. So, oh, we got in today, or in this week, we got every single pre-generated character folio. I should have taken a picture to put it up on the stream, uh, but we are just about ready to put those folios up on the website with uh, character bundles. We have the prices, um, so those are going to be coming up here really, really soon. I'm very excited. Okay, so um, why don't we go ahead and show some of our art for this week. So um, this is a beautiful, uh, we had already seen like the half portrait of this, uh, but one of our artists has like filled it out to a full 
length photo, and I believe this is a spell dancer. I'm pretty positive, but I could be wrong. Uh, but it is absolutely gorgeous, and I love the, the finished art here. So, yeah. And Adam, I just dropped my mic. Uh-oh. Okay. Mandy is currently digging around for her mic. Yes. <laughs> there we go. She's remiked. Okay, so um, with this, I think we should do another giveaway. Um, let's do, let me do, hold on. This is what I'm just going to do until Ethany gets here, is we're just going to keep give, doing giveaways. So Hopefully he gets here quick. <laughs> I know, right? Run out of prizes, start after having to give away things off the walls. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. Right, what's your third tip, by the way, while we do this? Oh, third tip. Uh, you caught me off guard. Uh, okay, the it's going to be hashtag spell dancer for the next giveaway. Sounds good. Okay. So third tip. I mean, there's so many. Uh, I mean, you can really get into the nitty gritty with things. Um, if you are familiar with logging into your uh, router and whatnot at home, uh, one feature that's not great to have online is something called Universal Plug and Play (UPnP). So turn that one off. It's uh, basically a way for devices on your network to open up ports to the internet themselves uh, in a way that may or may not be secure. So it does have the potential for making some things not work exactly the way you would expect or want them to, so you do have to play around with it, but that's one thing that is uh, another way you can lock down your home network. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. That's yeah. very insightful. Here's another piece of art. I had actually never seen this one before. Um, it was posted just last night. It's a shop in Dark and Haven. If anyone knows it specifically what shop it is, I would love to, to hear it because uh, Kim just was like, this is a certain shop in Dark and Haven and kind of indicated that people would know what it is. Um, however, I absolutely adore the feelings that this um, image evokes. Just it's a little bit mischievous. I love the colors, how vibrant it is. I really feel like it's going to be an Im one of those images that really brings Dark and Haven to life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm, when I'm looking at it here, I see there's kind of that green glow. I, it's a little small for me to see, but it almost looks like a potion shop or something like that. And maybe you can confirm. It definitely that. looks like some kind of like um, alchemist shop of some sort, with because they are holding potion, lots of potion bottles. Absolutely. So yeah, no, that it looks like an awesome place to go and uh, hang out with. Hang out and uh, find your latest potions. Quike, so. Quikey Mark? Qu quick Mark? Quick Mark? Someone's saying Quike, Quike Mark. I don't know how to say it. There's no apostrophe it, in there, so I, I don't know how to say it. It might be a play on Quickie Mark. Ah, well. Which is from The Simpsons. So. Ah, okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pull our next winner here. Um, someone says Jelly Shop of Bottom, bottom of Bruise and Bruise. Big John's out. Okay, there's only wrong answers, I guess, coming in here. Big John's <laughs> outhouse. You guys are just confusing me. Okay, here we go. Our next winner for the next Alfabio folio is Tone. Tone, congratulations. By the way, um, Tone is an awesome photographer who just posted some really cool shots of the moon. As everyone knows, we just had this beautiful like eclipse. So everyone should go check out Tone's work. Um, Tone, post your Instagram in... Uh, in the chat. So congratulations, Tone. We'll do another one coming up here. Um, okay, so next up, I'm just like digging through. I know some of the social media at uh, Kim's gonna, or Alphineas is gonna wanna talk to you through when he gets here, so I'm trying to pull stuff. So uh, while she's digging through yeah. that, something else that can be a lot of fun, especially if you're doing uh, puzzles in your various games, is look into uh, low-level cryptography or low-level, uh, you know, uh, code, code writing. I don't know if that's right, but um, basically you could potentially take, uh, you know, messages or whatnot and put them into uh, like a Caesar cipher, which is a rotation cipher. Think like, you know, uh, the old uh, ring uh, encoder, uh, code ring, encoder ring. Uh, but yeah, basically you can do a, a basic rotation cipher uh, where they have to just rotate all the letters of the alphabet some amount. You could do a substitution cipher and make them go through something like a frequency analysis, or you could even use this uh, if they are not familiar with cryptography or basic code breaking. Um, you could have it where they can take some text and take it to a code breaker, and then you can kind of walk them through it, and it can be a fun activity, especially if people are inclined to do things like Sudokus and stuff. It's kind of the same energy. 
You know, there was this fun meme um, that was going around the Facebook groups uh, a little while ago, which was like the general idea of it was like when your character's intelligence is super high, but you're just you. So, <laughs> and that was like a really interesting point because um, I love the idea of puzzles in games, but I would also be curious how GMs handle it when like your character would know how to solve a puzzle, mm-hmm. but your brain, your 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 player's brain just doesn't work that way. So with that, that's definitely always a thing you have to take into account because you don't want to stump your players and have them uh, just staring at the ground like what the heck is going on here. I did have a a DM at one point. Uh, The prompt was, you're standing in a field and there's a dirt circle around you. What do you do? And it's like, I dig the dirt. And it's like, no, that's not what this is. And it's like, I eat the dirt? Like, I don't, I'm a paladin dude. Like, what do you want me to do with this? Like, I pray to my deity and ask for help with the thing. He's like, your God says nothing. And it's like, you got to give me something to go off here because as far as I'm concerned, this is a fire pit and I'm going to make a bonfire. This would be awesome. (laughs) So, yeah, I think from a player's perspective, and I I like Alexander's suggestion here. He says uh, they can roll for hints. I think that's a great suggestion. Absolutely. Uh, From a player's perspective, I would say um, I love, I love puzzles, but they you also, as a GM, like want them to be fun for your players. And it's not fun when you're really... Sh- like, if you see that your players are really trying to solve it mm-hmm. um, and they're just struggling, um, like, pre-prepare some little minor hints that might help them be able to solve it. I think that's a really good idea. Oh, absolutely. But, yeah, yeah it would be but frustrating either- if it was like this... Like, of course, the GM wants them to get this, like, really hard puzzle. Maybe if you're playing with a bunch of atoms, they will figure it out eventually. <laughs> but... You know, no. and that's always, and I do agree. Having either hints at, on the hand ready, or uh, even saying like, "Oh, like when this player looks at it because his intelligence is super high and he has experience doing cryptanalysis and all that," when he looks at it, he, suddenly these five letters jump out in red, and he knows that those letters are perfect and they're correct. But the other ones, they leave something to be desired, and what that does is that starts narrowing it down. So they don't have to look at the entire puzzle. They know that some of this stuff is already in place. But they can start to to you know narrow it down and and come just to the the things that are actually broken or needing adjustment. Okay, we are going to go ahead and do our next giveaway, and this one is going to be hashtag puzzles, hashtag puzzles. And so again, we're giving away those last five Alfabio folios. I hope that there's five. So yeah, hashtag puzzles uh, to enter for one of the signed uh, Alfabio folios. So um, uh, while we're doing this giveaway, I'm going to go ahead and show some images from um, uh, the book that we're working on right now, which is uh, the Magica Cyclopedia. I don't know what they're calling it. Magica Volume 1, I think. The um, magic. Yeah. And so we have um, an initial concept for the normal cover. And then this is the concept for the special edition cover that's going to be coming out here. And... Um, I personally love uh, the wizard here with the hat, um, obviously. But I, I don't know. This this to me, I think, is your Merlin-esque wizard. I think it's a great choice for the front cover. Uh, but I also love this, like, strong, badass lady for the, for the special edition cover. I think that they all look great. Um, and then we also have uh, some sneak peeks from the inside, uh, what, how the whole thing's going to be laid out. Um, I'm starting to see more stuff come in from... Um, our graphic designers who are putting the book together, and it's going to look really cool. Um, if you go on Facebook and find this post from Alphineas Goo, uh, David Rice actually did a really cool, like a super cool animation of like lightning coming down and animated the whole the whole cover. It looks amazing. Um, and then uh, lastly, I want to point out uh, this dedication has like loads of typos in it, uh, but I had no idea. But Alphineas did dedicate the book at the very top to Cameron Mandy. And I was so touched. So, um, and there's other dedications in there too. It was all very sweet. But I got a whole paragraph and it was adorable. Like it just made me so warm and fuzzy. So I will say, eventually he'll come back and rewatch what we've done here in the first thing and in the first part of the uh, show. Whenever he gets here, I mean, it's 1020. I hope he's moved in traffic. Yeah. Let me let me text him and see if he's moved in traffic. So but yeah. while, while she's texting him, here's a question I have. So I tend to play the magic casters or the, the wizards, the sorcerers, the warlocks. Um, one of my favorite things to do 
is uh, sit there and really plot how I can use and abuse my spells, and not necessarily in a fun or not not in a not fun, basic not in a abusive way in the way that it will make the game unfun for everybody, but more in a clever way. Like, oh, I never thought of using that spell that way before. Uh, so, how many of you have been in unique situations where uh, you cast a spell in a way that maybe the DM didn't expect, or uh, you know, it created some effect on your players that uh, resulted in some happy fun times? So, I remember one time um, we were playing like a four-shot high-level campaign. So, I think what we were like level seventeen. You were. Oh, yes, I know you were like level 20, whatever. Um, but I can't even remember what spell it was. It was like where you could create, um, uh, uh, I think it was like an anti gravity field or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I cast it and I was able to like um, throw like a huge portion of the enemy combatants up against a ceiling or something like that. And I remember that um, my GM was like, well, crap, now I have to figure out how to get these people off the ceiling to actually fight you guys. Or I don't even remember what it was. But yeah, um, I've only played like spellcaster, like, like uh, I will say like solely spellcasters like once. Um, most of the time I definitely enjoy playing like more fighter characters that do more damage. So Whoa, hold on. Spellcasters do a lot of damage if used properly. I'm I I know, I know. I, I just... Ugh, it's you just, just like punching about. people in the face instead of using wit and intellect to... Coax them into what you want to do. This is great. Um, my wife used flower to find an invisible monster. That That's very useful. Absolutely. And that is a very clever way to use something that is otherwise mundane to uh, now suddenly you have uh, the ability to see something you couldn't see before. Right. Because the thing is still there. When you're invisible, you still exist in the world. You just uh, can't be seen. So, um, Deity031 said, uh, that's Josh, said, used a fireball and a wooden beam in a drow guard tower barracks. Killed like 30 plus drow by breaking the building down. Ooh. Wow. That's great. Um, Alex says, mage hand and prestidigitation can be super useful, and I totally agree with both of those. Mm -hmm. Um I know, it would be, like uh, Ben says, it would be great to have a collection of all these ideas on how spells can be misappropriated. And I totally agree. We, yeah. should, start a, we should start a Facebook post and like yeah. uh, get these. Um, Ultimately, it does come down to the DM's ruling because if there's something that absolutely breaks the world, they can always come back and say, no, that's not going to happen. Like but, wish? Like yeah. if, if you use a wish? Well, yeah, so wish is definitely one of those that is uh, very because you basically can change anything about the world, but this is something where uh, someday when I sit down and I have my a table of my own, I'm going to put rules in place that say like, hey, look, if you get a super powerful spell like Wish, yeah, you get one Wish, and then your character forgets it and can never learn it again or something like that. That way, they get to have their fun, they get to manipulate the world in one big way, but it makes it something that they want to save for just the right moment because you don't want them going every 24 hours and wishing changing the world every 24 hours. Uh, you want it to be something where they need to save it for, you know, characters about to die, or the party is on their last leg, or, you know, something like this, um, to save or make some meaningful change, as opposed to just being like, I wish I had coffee right now. All right, we're good for the next 24 hours, you know. <laughs> uh, so our next winner, by the way, was Namastacy, who I, I'm sending something. To, I, Namaste, Stacey, do you already have an Alfabio folio from the Game to Grow? Uh, let me know, and if if you do, we will send you something else. Um, uh, we had some other great answers, too. Uh, my daughter used Entangle to catch people falling off a cliff, and um, we... I'm just sorry, I'm just trying to read all the comments here. Um, oh, uh, Harry says, Wish has a rule like that already. Um, if you don't use it to recreate an existing spell, there is a 30% chance you can't ever cast it again. Oh, cool. I didn't know that was written into it. I'll have to uh, go and find that in the rule books, but I like that because uh, it is definitely one of those spells that, uh, you know, can be absolutely crushing to a game or completely throw off a, a DM if they have some story they're trying to tell and suddenly you wish the bad guy out of existence. Like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so I found out from Al uh, Alphidius that the highway is closed, which is why he is... Everyone's having to exit the highway, which is why um, he is 
not here right now. Awesome. So, so um, it's the Adam show this week. Yeah. No, I think he will be here. I think he will at least make it for the last 15 minutes. I'm keeping that. Um, hey, Nama Stacy, uh, I actually have a list, and you actually have already won an Alfabio folio, and it's going to be on its way to you. So um, I will send you some other some other prizes, uh, choices for prizes, and we'll make sure that you have one. But um, yeah, I actually, the people who won the Alfabio folios were Shan Van Arsdale, Heather Greasley, Christy Callis, uh, uh, Cassandra Pelton, Rob Gustafson, Kevin Lever, Kevin Morris, Nama Stacy, Michael Young, and Corgan Elfis. So um, I will go ahead and reach out to you after the show and send you some um, other things that we could send you for prizes. Okay, uh, next up, let's do, uh, let's, I'm going to re-roll that giveaway um, since she's already gotten one coming. Um, and so Mer- Mercury 199HG is our next winner. So congratulations. So you have also won a, uh, a Fabio folio. Uh, why don't we do a little bit more social media while we wait for, for Kim to get here. Um, Keith uh, Garrigan uh, actually had a really cool new portrait made. Um, so this is, I think, our first full body custom portrait. And um, I absolutely love how he how it turned out. And um, he made a little post about who his character was. And I thought I had it here in my social media, but I don't see it. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love the full body portrait. And I'm curious if other people would be interested in full body uh, portraits for their characters as well. Um, I mean, we love we love just the regular portraits, but uh, I, I love what all this encompasses. I love the animals, and um, I think you could definitely get a feel for this character. Just it's just a fantastical little setting. So, yeah. Okay. Next up, um, this is a cool piece of art that was posted. Um, it's a skyship. You see, like normally, like Alf- like I would say, oh, here's the skyship, and then Alphineus would fill in all the details on this art. <laughs> but I am at a loss because I don't, I'm not the lore master here. So I, I just can admire the, the amazing art. So a hundred percent like to be the captain of one of these things. Yeah. Sorry, what? I said, I would a hundred percent like to be the captain of one of these ships. How would you secure this from cyber attacks? I mean, if you were the captain, you can't have cyber attacks if you don't have internet. So so you would just have no internet? There's no internet in Zyothe. Have you ever once seen a character pull out a cell phone? You don't know what's happening in this. I, I mean, I don't know that it's been written into Zyothe. <laughs> I so. think this is true. I was reading comments. I got I got lost, guys. I got lost, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I guess we could keep an ear out for uh, viruses or other things coming over, like communication should, lines. Like yeah. people sending messages like, have we talked to you about your car insurance lately? <laughs> <laughs> Or your horse, sorry, your horse insurance. Oh, Cars don't exist. I'm being reminded of, thank you all. I'm being reminded. Uh, this skyship is rumored to still exist. It is a highly sought after piece of ether and te- technology. That's right. I think we've actually talked about this before. Um, uh, yes. Okay. Hacking through the Zion Thus. These are great comments. So, um, okay. So, uh, where was I? Okay. So, here's Gen Con. Um, so, I believe Adam and I are going to both be at it, Gen Con. I uh, think in August um, is the plan, but we'll, we'll have to see. Maybe not Adam, maybe just me. It might just be you because yeah. I have a new class starting on the 8th. Oh, yeah. So unless it happens in August before the 8th, I probably won't be there. This is where me and Adam discuss our uh, scheduling stuff. It's just on Good Morning Zayate. But anyway, um, I at least will be out at Gen Con. Um, Adam's coming out with us to KupaCon this weekend, which is really mm-hmm. exciting. Um, and we have already sold out a ton of our GUI games. If you um, are interested in doing GUI games while you're out at Gen Con, please sign up as soon as possible uh, because things are going really fast. Um, So I know, I think Harry is going to be doing a bunch of uh, of GMing while we're out there. And and other people here in the stream are going to be doing lots of GMing. It's going to be be so much fun. Um, Also, um, Star and Adam Somerville are still looking for online GMs. Um, and so if you are interested in GMing online, um, please reach out to Star and Adam and um, let them know. It's, it's going to be a great time, both online and in person. So um, next up here, we have Michael Crawford uh, painted the full set of um, Alphineas Goo miniatures and the hats and everything like that. These are from Harry's 
uh, miniatures, and I think he did an excellent job. So um, I just had to show off uh, the beautiful. So, uh, yeah. and I was looking. I have a camera Mandy one here. Is this another Harry? Yeah, that's a Harry mini. Nice. I have a little camera Mandy mini on the shelf next to Adam. So, um, okay, Army of Ancients one. If you can GM, um, let me know if you're in the Discord, Discord, and we'll get you hooked up with um, uh, with Adam and uh, Adam and Star Somerville. Sorry, I got confused because Adam's like sitting right over here as well. So, so many atoms. Yes, I love the hats as well. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do a, another giveaway. I think we've given away three so far. Uh, this one is going to be. Um, hats like, off to you. Hats off to you. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and get that set up, up really quickly. Um, and we'll roll. I don't know if that's too complicated to type or not. But... We'll just do hats off. How hats about that? Off. No, Hash hats on. Hats on. Okay, Come hats on. on. Hashtag, Stay on theme. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag hats on. So um, that should be open now. So uh, we're going to go for the fourth Alphineas folio here. Hashtag hats on. Um, and we're going to just keep breezing through social media, <laughs> I guess. Thank you all for hanging out with us this morning. Um, hopefully Alphineas gets here for part of the show. Um, He'll show up to close it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, here's an awesome um, uh, setup from, I believe this, I think this is from Matt. And uh, basically his adventures are facing off against an epic dragon. And I thought, no, thank you. But we have faced off against an epic, dra epic dragon before and it's been a lot of fun. Absolutely. And I know that uh, I've had somebody pull out not a mini as big as this one, but it's always fun when the dragon mini comes out and you're like, uh oh, yeah. <laughs> we're about to have a bad time. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, this is a really cool uh, piece of art that shows off many of our wonderful folks who are in the GUI community. Uh, so we have um, Alphineas, we have Anthony Overton, Heather Greasley, um, we have Ben and, and is it, do you say Giza, G-I-S-A, Giza? Um, and uh, I think that might be Gary. And I cannot remember who the person on the on the right here is. Uh, but it is an awesome uh, portrait that, I know that Alphineas is really putting um, a lot of work into having more portraits that focus on our awesome folks and put them into the world. And I absolutely love this, so. Um, let's see here. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and roll the next winner here. And it is going to be Kentori. So congratulations, Kentori. You are our next winner of an Alfabio folio. So we have one more to give away uh, coming up here. And hopefully Alphineas shows up for his stream. Um, he says, oh my goodness, now I think one of the tow truck drivers lost his wheel and he's blocking traffic too. So that's fun. I yeah. think it, I think it's not going to be uh, any Kim today. We, we will we will have <laughs> to see. We will just keep giving away stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Adam Eason posted this absolutely wonderful um, photo. Again, we always try and give inspiration. This photo is done by um, Albert Dross Photography, and um, Adam's caption was he could imagine uh, this spider web covered in jewels and skulls. And I absolutely love that idea for an encounter, a spider with a web like this. Um, Where the jewels kind of look like the morning dew or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wouldn't that be... Little sapphires. Yeah, wouldn't that be an insane... What if like, and the spider's eyes were all jewels? Ooh. I'm just putting stuff out kind, there. Kind of like that Moana crab. What? The Moana crab. Oh, like the crab. I thought you said crab. <laughs> I was no, like, crab. I was like, there's no crab in Moana. <laughs> so yeah, I absolutely love um, what Adam posted here and the inspiration behind it. And so um, again, please follow uh, our Facebook page for more inspiration like this. So 
Thank you, Lydia. Lydia says you guys are doing great. We're trying real hard. Neither, neither of us have the charisma <laughs> of Alphinia. So. I have so much charisma. Uh, okay, it's true. I'm just letting you run it because yeah. uh, I d know very little about any of the photos getting flashed up on the screens. So. I know, and they're so small, like you, you can barely see them. So, um, And I mean, we actually had like a day there dark adventure, I think, all set up for today. Um, Kiki Hoodie posted this awesome monster mini in the den and I absolutely thought it was terrifying. So it's like this giant worm with like these spirals of teeth coming out of it. Mm. Um, and I just like, if, I, if we had to face that in an actual campaign, I, I think I would be terrified. The GM well, pops that one out on the table and you're yeah. like, well, crap. Well, so, if you were McCall when we were back doing the, uh, the carnival, there was a lot of worms in that one. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so in the not, not as big and not as toothy, but at the same time, they were definitely smashing one worm after another as they ran back and forth. Yeah. So if you haven't seen that stream, I think you've posted it now, haven't you? Uh, yes, it is up on YouTube. So it's the charity stream for Game to Grow, mm -hmm. uh, where they did a uh, Carnival Crashers type um, scenario. It was a lot of fun, and that's the one where. Uh, uh, I think he's dressed up as Alfabio. Which no, is... Alfabio showed up. Alfabio well, yes. wasn't there. Yeah, that is true. I'm sorry. I'm just distracted. I'm reading comments. I'm talking. So normally, I'm trying to help. Yeah, I appreciate it. Normally, Kim. <laughs> but yeah, Kim's no, more the talker. All yeah. set. So normally, the place where you'll most commonly see me is standing around in the background because I will usually be running the dungeon camera. So uh, it's my job to make sure that you know whatever you see on cam is uh, you know what's important at the moment, or hopefully what's important at the moment. Um, and so that was a lot of fun being able to stand there, actually see the carnival brought to life in 3D because we had all the minis set up. There's 3D printed tents and everything else. Um, so like I say, if you haven't had a chance to go see that stream, I highly recommend it. It is a couple hours long, but it's good, uh, you know, toss in the background, listen to it while you're uh, working on tidying the house or mowing the lawn or whatever. Well, if you're in Colorado, you're not mowing the lawn today. I was planning on mowing the lawn today, fun fact. But... So yeah, Adam <laughs> normally watches the stream while doing like house stuff. So that's why he's suggesting all this. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'll just stick it on my cell phone, put it on the counter and I'll go and do dishes or something. It's great. So. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, speaking of Carnival, our last giveaway uh, for the Alfabio Folio is going to be hashtag Carnival. So, um, just put in hashtag Carnival, and we will have and given away those five Alfabio folios today. Not only that, but uh, we had a guest uh, guest DM, Lokbutt, taking care of uh, our adventurers doing the... Yes. What? Speaking of Lokbutt, though, um, I actually have like a really cool Corey uh, post here. And um, I need to look, sorry. So uh, the reason I cannot read this is because all of my stuff looks very low resolution on the screen to keep my bandwidth working, but um, basically he posted this amazing uh, like Sundestia themed set where he's running a game and I cannot remember the location for it, but I was like blown away by how gorgeous the set was and it's all set in Sundestia um, and I... Uh, it looks like a, one of the like the Mayan-like pyramids where it's the step pyramid. Yeah, so um, Sundestia is based a lot, I believe, on Africa and one other place, and I can't believe I can't remember. Sorry, normally Alphineas is the one. <laughs> you guys can know, I'm just like the, I'm just a filler, so Alphineas is the star, I'm just like the filler, so <laughs> I appreciate you guys so much sticking with me right now, uh, but anyway, um, so uh, yeah, it, it, it's a really cool, uh, Corey, like, 3D prints, he's the one who did the Carnival 3D printed mm -hmm. sets, and yeah, he does an awesome, awesome job. Yeah, actually, it was oh, kind of there fun. it is, the Duansara C. Thank you so much. Ah, that's funny. Silas Lord Twist says, "Is your hus husband camera camera Adam? C camera Adam? Camera Cam Adam? Cam Make Adam. it one word. Cam camera Cam Adam. Adam. <laughs> yeah. Cam Adam. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, like uh, at KublaCon this weekend, when we run the Great Gooey Dungeon giveaway, um, we will be not streaming it live, but we will be recording all of it, and Adam will be doing the camera work while I run around and do everything else for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also, speaking of other conventions coming up, if you're located in Colorado Springs, uh, we have Tacticon coming here. It is run by the same people who run Genghis Khan, and um, it is a lot of fun, I hear. Um, it is more based in, uh, I believe, like uh, uh, battle scenarios. What are those called? What is it called when you're... Combat! <laughs> Combat. Oh, my gosh. 
I mean, that would, that would make sense <laughs> since it's called Tacticon. We're looking at the tactics of how to yes. do various battles. Yeah, so. yeah. So definitely, um, if you're in Colorado Springs and need something fun to do uh, late August, uh, please check out Tacticon. We love the people who run it. Um, it's a it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also on Facebook, uh, Tony posted this really interesting um, uh, article. And it basically says, uh, the, art, the title is, 630-foot sinkhole in China reveals massive ancient forest world. Mm. And I absolutely loved the idea that there was this giant sinkhole and that a forest had grown in it. And um, it reminded me um, a lot of what happened in the, oh my gosh, my rooted world history. The big event, <laughs> the one big event. <laughs> The cataclysm. I don't know if there, you know, kind of the idea of like, you know, things still growing out of disaster, I guess. And like the corrupted magic that could come from that. I don't know. I just loved it. So when there's the thing, even the woe. Thank the you. The woe of ruin. ruin. I know. <laughs> I'm so bad. Oh, my gosh. I know lots of video stuff, guys. I, <laughs> and I hear you guys talk about the woe of ruin all the time. I just could not put two and two together. I know. I know. So, I know. But that's the thing. Sometimes a large cataclysmic event can act as kind of a, you know, clearing the ground and making room for new growth and making room for new um, new life and new adventures and all that. So, you know, the, it, it is a trope that happens, you know, somewhat commonly in extraordinarily long-lived stories where... At some point, they'll go and they will just, you know, wipe everything out and start from scratch or start from mostly scratch. And this gives a good opportunity for your characters and uh, inhabitants of that world to have a huge thing that they have to overcome. And then they have to go and rebuild. And you get to look at the process of that rebuilding. So, yeah, this is exactly the kind of stuff I need. Yeah, give all that information, all that backstory. By the way, um, uh, the winner of the fifth Alfabio folio is Ikron Zero. Nice. So congratulations, Ikron Zero. Um, you are the winner of the final Alfabio folio. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys all so much for staying with us. Um, I have a couple more things to show. I do not know that um, Alphineas is going to get here. Oh, wait, wait. He says, I am free. I will be there in about three minutes. Okay, so just stay tuned <laughs> for three more minutes <laughs> with have, us. You only yes. have to deal with this for three more minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I deal with it for my whole life and I love it, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's so unlucky. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Uh, this was from, oh my God, I think it's TJ from Chris Vallen. Uh, anyway, it was another really cool miniature uh, monster. And speaking of that ancient forest, it kind of reminded me of this miniature uh, because it would be really cool if, um, like, so the, this is like a monster with like earth on it, like trees growing on it and, and stuff like that. And so, like, in an ancient forest like that that was in the sinkhole like it'd be really cool to come ac across monsters like this I, I thought so. absolutely something that's been sleeping for thousands of years and has been awoken by this recent event and now it's coming out to see what's going on and you know is it a, a man, uh, what is it benevolent or malevolent uh, creature what's malevolent isn't that like evil or bad ah uh, so, probably I don't, I don't know, know. Okay. I left my thesaurus at home. I know, right? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, you will have noticed in Discord that we had posted um, uh, an announcement. We posted it on Facebook. Uh, basically, uh, Wizards of the Coast now owns D&D &D Beyond, and they updated their terms of service. And so they are going to take ownership of the things posted on um, the on D&D &D Beyond. Um, this isn't dissimilar to what other companies do. I remember like at one point Google, if I remember correctly, Google was claiming ownership of over the things that like you did in like Google Docs and stuff like that. I think, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it, I, I think it's just to cover their butts. I don't think that they're trying to do anything malicious or anything like that with it. Uh, but with that said, we do need people to not post um, GUI Cube content on D&D Beyond quite yet. Um, you know, I know that there's been talks in the works for us uploading stuff to D&D Beyond um, and having a partnership with them. Um, obviously, with Wizards in the Coast taking over, I'm not sure where we're at with that. Um, so I just wanted to uh, put it out there on the stream um, that we're trying to avoid um, any legal implications or licensing issues uh, with Wizards in the Coast. Um, Justin Whitman here, um, definitely look him up in the GUI den. He has been posting um, his adventures in the uh, Red Star Rising campaign. 
Um, so if you are interested in seeing what other people are doing with the Red Star Rising campaign, if you're interested in other GMing ideas or tips, tricks, and other things for running your own campaign, uh, definitely look at Justin's post. Um, he posts a recap of uh, what his group is doing um, and does a great job of, of, of doing write-ups for his group. So um, let's see here. Um, this was a fun meme that Alphineas uh, sent me to post in the show. He loved this. He said, Dear new GM, if your players and you are having fun and everyone feels safe and listened to, then you are an awesome DM. That's it. End of requirements. And I actually love the sentiment behind this because I totally agree. There's no one who should dictate how your game should run. Like there's there's tips out there. Like we do tips, but we'll never say, oh, you have to do this to run a great game. And at the end of the day, if it's you gathering with your friends and it's you doing your best and making sure that they feel um, listened to, if they feel um, comfortable, you know, and they're having a great time, at the end of the day, that's all we really want from our games as players. So we just want to go and have a great time. Yeah, and you have to read the room because every table is going to be a little bit different. So. You know, every table is going to have their own standards. Everybody's going to have what they're comfortable with or not comfortable with or, you know, what storytelling elements you want. I know we've played some games in the past where uh, the DM went a little more sci-fi than some people enjoyed and um, other people, you know, keep it a little more tame than maybe, you know, the table may want. So, again, it's just a matter of finding that happy middle ground, making sure that everybody at the table is enjoying it. Um, one thing I really like, too, is uh, when you focus on a given player for a little bit, kind of give them that time of being special. Like, hey, we're going to go do a side quest for this player. And, you know, again, that, give, that gives that person the, the highlight. They get to feel special for, you know, the couple of games. And then you can move on to somebody else and focus on the things that they want to do. And that way you can kind of meet everybody's needs at the table. That's a really good idea. I love that. And like um, Harry, who's one of our great friends, obviously, he says, just so you know, I don't use all the gooey suggestions at my table. And shame on me. But really not shame on Harry. He has his own style of DMing. And Alphys' style of DMing is not going to work for every human being. And so um, like, I think Alphineas runs great games and tells great stories, but you need to find the style that works best for you. Because if you're trying to emulate Alphineas or try to emulate any of these GMs on the, um, on the, on YouTube or wherever you, wherever you admire your people, like Critical Role, I think, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, that doesn't necessarily, like it's, it's good to take tips and then adapt them for yourself and then adapt them for your personality. So, um, and like maybe, oh wait, I see him. Alphineas is here. So. Um, it's my throne now. <laughs> you, you <laughs> impertinent, uh, impertinent individual, and you're wearing a hat. That's right, I stole it, it's mine. <laughs> okay, Alphineas is here. All right, if you'll mute me, I'll rip my mic off here. Okay. Just slide over. I'll just slide over? Yeah, okay. Well, well you can share a mic or something. Well, well, this one's under the table leg, so I can't scoot over while I'm still holding that one. Okay. But I can... Yeah, put that one on. Put this guy on. Hello! Ha <laughs> ha! It is good to see you, friends. I apologize for my tardiness. Yes, apparently there was some kind of terrible accident. In fact, six tro tow trucks went by this entire stopped group for, you know, just driving by, right? And then one of them broke down on the side of the road. It was actually blocking traffic. It's quite interesting to have the tow truck break down. Yeah, so anyway, this was, uh, this was, took me an hour to get a mile. So this was, uh, this was difficult. Yes. Anyway, I hope they've had fun. I think so. I don't know. I mean, they've I've been, been very trying. kind. They have been very kind to us in the chat. We've given away all five Alfabio folios. Oh, marvelous! Yes, yeah. the oh, no, not that marvelous. Actually, now that I think, about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Camera Mandy has been uh, saying that she's just going to give away stuff every five minutes until you show up. Oh. So you've got kind of a backlog. Oh goodness! <laughs> well, good. I'm glad everybody got some stuff. That's about magnificent. Anyway, my apologies for this uh, this morning, but it was truly unavoidable. I hope everybody's okay in this accident. I was. Sitting there thinking, you know, there's a lot of tow trucks going by, and so I hope, uh, hope it was just a big smash up and nobody got really hurt or anything like that. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that nothing like that happened. So did you tell them about cybersecurity? I gave them a couple tips here and there, and yes. uh, we had a few folks in the uh, 
chat as well come in with some of their own. Well, so. I know Harry is also a cybersecurity mm-hmm. guy, yes, and I think uh, there are a number of others, right? The biggest thing is don't click on links, right? This is one of the biggest things in your email, right? It's the biggest thing. Don't don't uh, expose, right? Absolutely. If you get an email and you're not expecting it, or even if you are potentially expecting it, but you're not expecting that link, don't click on it. <laughs> yes, and we have even had, uh, I will tell you a tale. This is a tale. I won't tell you who it happened to, but a friend who uh, has a business uh, his his accounting person, uh, the accounting group that they sent a uh, he he sent an email to his accounting group that said, please transfer fifty thousand dollars. Right, this is a big money. This is a, you know this is not a small amount of money to this uh, account immediately. It's very important. Blah blah blah, and it came from uh, our our friend. Uh, at least that's what it appeared to be. Mm-hmm. But they had snuck in the email was just slightly different Mm -hmm. right it was just slightly different so even if you looked at the email you might be fooled that it was actually the email so anyway they transferred fifty thousand dollars and uh and i believe that money was lost forever it was a hard hit for for oh and that that hits a couple of the big social engineering things which is a sense of urgency so if somebody tells you do this do this right now do it immediately that should be a flag. Yes. Um, positions of authority. So the CEO of your company comes forward and says, hey, I need you to go buy a $500 gift card for this customer. We're going to go hook them up. And you need to do it right away. And don't tell anyone because, you know, these are all things that sound like they should be obvious. But in the moment, you know, it's very easy to get confused or forget that, hey, hold on. You know, the boss is telling me to do something immediately. This is un- a- abnormal for what they normally ask. And, you know, you just have to take a step back and, and hold on. One thing you can do as well is if you are in a position where you think your boss or uh, somebody who's very important is asking you to do a thing, give them a phone call. So if you get an email that says, buy this thing right now, send me money right now, in theory, you should have contact information for them outside of email. So you should be able to either hop in your instant messenger and just say, hey, I got an email from you. Yeah, text them, email them, call them because you should have that phone number. And just verify if your boss is sitting here and actually needs a $500 gift card or actually needs you to transfer $50,000, a quick phone call should be able to like, hey, you sent me an email for $50,000. Is that uh, accurate? Is that something you want me to do? And then they say, yes, do it. Or uh, I sent you no email. Right. <laughs> At which point you can, <laughs> you can start, figure out there's a problem. right? Yeah, start raising and, and here's the thing. If you really think your boss might get mad at you for texting or, you know, emailing or something like that, and that person really would get mad at you for that, you need to find a new job, right? Because a good boss is going to be like, thank you, right? This was smart of you to do this. And yes, I do want you to do it, right? So uh, so I agree with all that stuff. Anyway, cameraman, we gave away a bunch of stuff. We didn't get to talk to Mike. We were hoping to have Mike Eckert on from Kubla Khan. That's where we're heading out. We're, we're going to be out there for uh, for the weekend here coming up. And uh, doing a lot of fun stuff in the San Francisco area to uh, further the GUI Cube. We've got um, uh, a lot of prizes we're going to give away because we're actually going to do the GUI game show from there. Uh, But we're not going to do it uh, on a stream. But the Gen Con stream is really coming together. So it looks like, I mean, I think we're well over half of the tickets have been sold now. Uh, and um, and there are another. I think I think the room can only hold about another hundred more, hundred so more. So uh, I don't know the exact number. So if I'm off a little bit, please hold hold that against me. Um, but uh, Nate uh, Taylor and uh, Stefan, who uh, Pocorni, who is the founder of Dwarven Forge, they're both going to be playing with us. We're talking to some other celebrities to play. And of course, if you're in the audience, you have a chance to actually get called up to stage to play as well. So this is really, really exciting. You've seen all the pictures of Magicka. I don't know what all you showed in social media. I, I did all the social media. You did all the stuff. We were vamping for time. We were just like, okay. <laughs> But I'm going the audience now. Was it fun? Did they do a good job? Give us the truth. You they know? said that it, they had a good time. Good. This is marvelous, right? Because <laughs> I mean, the, the most wonderful thing about this is really it's a bunch of friends getting together on Saturday morning to have a little coffee and jabber about the games that we love, right? This is the wonderful thing. Magicka is really coming together, my friends. Yes, it's going to be a lot more pages. It's probably going to be our prettiest uh, tome yet. But it also has so much wonderful content that is in there. New classes, all these new spells, new magic items. Some of them taken from our uh, adventures, but some of them totally new. Uh, it, it, it's got the history of magic. It talks about how magic works. It's even got a little bit of, you know, fantasy physics in there, which we think you'll like. And uh, it's just it's just a great tone. Plus a lot of essays from our marvelous 
uh, uh, friends who have done portraits and, and put characters into the, the weirded world. There is one thing I do want to make, uh, make, make about, I sent you this before we go, I sent you this about, um, about the D and D Beyond and Wizards. Uh, I, I already, you show that? I already talked about yeah, that. So yeah. So a really, and I, I want you to tell this because I've said this so many times to all of you, right? Even in our contributors, right? Because you are whatever you're contributing is becoming GUI Cube's property, right? It's work for hire. That's why we give you rewards and all that stuff. That's why I tell people all the time. Don't put anything in there that's special to you, right? That you don't fully understand that you, you know, you're gonna lose control of that, right? Because it's it's really kind of sneaky to 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 have in your terms and conditions that um, you know, you're gonna take they get you grant an irrevocable license to your content without without really sort of telling being out in front of people telling them that. So I, I really I want to to encourage you to if you're a creator and you're using uh, any system that says hey you put your content in here you know you get it make sure that you are very cognizant that it is okay for you to put that content in there you have no problem losing control of it right. And secondly, that it's not something special that you might lose, use in the future, right? This is the idea of Zayafe, right? We, we are doing this, but we want make, to make sure that you don't, don't do anything. Don't give anything to GUI Cube that is not something that you can, can part with as a creator. So this is, this is really important. Keep, keep your mind on these things because you never know 10 years down the road, you might have a character you want to write a, a book about. And that character might be very special to you and you want to keep it. So just... Just always remember that, all right? Hopefully, Wizards will back off on this. I actually think it's it's not the, the most wonderful of policy that everything that you upload into to D&D Beyond is suddenly, you know, um, an irrevocable, irrevocable license that goes for every bit of content that's in there. So that's my that's my thing for today. We love Wizards. We're not in there. We're not trying to be in their face. They obviously allow us to make the stuff for fifth edition. But we think this is something we would hope they would they might consider changing. I hope so too. I think I honestly think that it is just there right now to cover their their butts. I don't think that they're trying to be malicious at no, all. No, no, it very well could be right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I get that completely. I'm not uh, I'm not trying to throw shade. I really you know this camera, Mandy. I don't throw shade oh, really absolutely. at most anybody. Yeah. And honestly, fifth edition has really renewed uh, t t uh, TTRPGs, right? Uh, fantasy role playing. It's been a wonderful thing that has happened uh, because of fifth edition. And um, obviously, we're able to publish under fifth edition. So, so this is a, this is a marvelous thing. Anyway, Adam, truly thank you, my friend. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. It wonderful, wonderful. I, I vamped as good as I could. Yes, but there why are pictures. you wearing a damn hat? This is uh, what you do. Know, it I was, was in, told to hat. The, hat it was the insisted at the upon. Of the <laughs> it was insisted upon. It was insisted upon by a camera Mendy, of and, course, and the queen of the hatter. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but when when she tells me put on a hat, I put on a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, sir. She tells me a lot of things too, which I do. Yes, because it's, it's trouble if you don't. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> All right, my friends. Listen, thank you. I apologize again for my tardy. Camera Mandy, Adam, thank you for, for carrying this well. I hope you all have lots of fun. We're going to be at Kubla Khan. We're going to do Goo Morning from there. Uh, very excited to uh, show you what's going on in San Francisco. This is our last show inside this dungeon. Oh, that's right, because we'll be moving. Moving, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll have a new studio. It'll still be the same. The same, but different. <laughs> Same-ish. Yes, well, and I'm excited about some of the changes that we're yeah. going to do with Good Morning as well. We're talking about doing actually a Game Master segment every week. We're talking about changing up the tours, doing more readings. Um, we're going to bring more guests on. So a lot of our, and a lot of them will be our GUI friends. So these, this is... You know, this is our goal is to to have our friends around. So we're we're excited about all the new stuff that's coming. We wish you a most wonderful rest of your weekend, my friends. Cheers to you. Cheers to Camera Mandy. Cheers to Adam. And may all your adventures be sticky. Ha ha. <laughs>